artificial intelligence, chat GPT, natural language processing, machine learning, the AI apocalypse is coming. Resistance is futile. So if you can't beat them, why not join them? Let's learn how to do machine learning in C Sharp. But wait, don't you have to be a data scientist to understand how to do machine learning? Thanks to ML.net, which has been around for some time, machine learning in C Sharp is now more accessible than ever, with the ability to do things like classification, which is what we're gonna look at today, sentiment analysis, which is where you can look at the positive and negative aspects of different pieces of content, often used in things like customer reviews. You can predict what things are inside an image, so you can identify items within an image, and lots of other use cases, and things we take for granted today all run on frameworks like ML.net. But before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me to bring you lots more great .NET content. So this video aims to give you a basic introduction to machine learning in .NET and an introduction to ML.NET using the use case of item classification. Classification allows us to take in a bunch of data and using a trained model, identify specific categories that could exist within that data, classifying the data. In my use case, I'm gonna be taking in a bunch of email subjects. So I'm gonna create a console app where we can type in an email subject. And we're gonna use our trained model to decide which department in a business the email should go to based on the content. So for example, we may have an email subject of, I didn't get paid. Um, and that could go to either finance or HR, so not a good example. Good start. New employee contract. Okay, there's an example of something that could go through to HR. Or we could have um, potential customer lead that could go to the sales department. We could also have my printer doesn't work and I don't know why I still have a printer. And that could go through to IT. We're going to start off by creating a model that ML.NET can ingest. And then we're going to train that model and tell it to output a prediction of what department an incoming email subject should be assigned to. And one important point I should make is that ML.NET isn't designed to be just a standalone machine learning framework. In that sense, I mean that you just use it in isolation. You can do that, but what ML.NET strives to do is make it so that you can integrate machine learning into existing applications. So, you know, you might, you might have a simple e-commerce application where you, uh, like I said before, you're using a review system. You might have customers which are adding reviews for your products and you wanna have something which is able to ingest that data as it goes and maybe predict sentiment. So you'd be able to identify if somebody was particularly dissatisfied with their purchase and then maybe you could take some action based on that. Let's jump into Visual Studio and build a console application with a classification example. So I fired up Visual Studio and I'm gonna build me a console app. Uh, and I'm gonna call this my classification. No, sorry, let's, let's call it something better. Email subject classifier. Okay, there we go. So it's 2024 guys, I'm gonna use .NET 8. I'm gonna create that console app, and there we go. So we've got our bog standard console application. I'm gonna get rid of that stuff and start from scratch. So before we start writing any code, we're gonna to need to have a model or a training set. So it means we need some initial sample data, some examples of some email subjects and some of the departments that they would correspond to. ML.NET supports the use of TSV files, TSV being tab supported value files, which is, as it says on the tin, basically just a bunch of columns separated by tabs. So Microsoft has an example of this on their getting started tutorial, which I can show you here. And this is a raw example of um, one of their training sets. Now this is for a different example. This is where they're classifying GitHub issues, but you can see here that we've got the columns. So we've got ID, area, title, description, and they're just separated by tabs. So we can just put this data into the file and we can use this as part of the machine learning process. So we need to create an equivalent of that for email subjects and departments. In the real world, if this was going to go into production, then we'd gather some existing emails. We'd go into our mail server, we'd get 
all the different emails and their subjects and we may even manually classify them so that we have our initial training set. I ain't got time for that. So I went to my good friend ChatGPT, I salute my future robot overlords, and I asked it to create me a tab separated file with some typical email subjects that might go to departments such as IT, finance, sales, and HR. And this is what I got. So it's a lot simpler than the example that I've just shown you from Microsoft, but the principle is the same. We've got a subject column and then a department column. So here, for example, a subject of service outage notification would go to department IT. If I scroll down a bit further, we can see some more examples. So profit and loss statement review goes to finance. Again, customer satisfaction survey, sales, and job transfer request process, HR. So I'm just gonna to go to the project and add a new folder and I'm gonna call it models. And then I'm opening the folder in File Explorer and I'm gonna copy in that model, subjects model, and there we go. And inside we can see we've got our TSV file. One important point on this is that we want to set a property on this file as part of the solution. Now, on the right hand side, it might be difficult to see because the writing's a little bit small, but where we've got copy to output directory, we want to set that to copy if newer. By default, it's set to do not copy, but copy if newer will mean that if we did update it, then we can make sure that the latest version is always in the solution. Cool, so there's our training set, but this is useless if we don't have ML.NET installed. So let's install that from NuGet. I'm gonna to go to NuGet Package Manager, manage NuGet Packages for solution, and then I'm gonna search for Microsoft.ML.NET. And it would help if I was actually pointing to NuGet.org. There we go. And I'm going to take the latest stable version and install that onto my project. And then at the very top, I know I've got top level statements installed, but just for clarity, I'm going to put a using statement for Microsoft.ml. Zoom that in a bit. Okay, so now we need to talk about loading the data set into memory. So this is where we need to create a class which can represent each of the rows in our TSV file. So I'm gonna create a new class. I'm gonna keep it in this program.cs for now just to keep it simple. So public class, and I'm gonna call this email subject. Then I'm gonna put in properties for each of the columns in the TSV file. So I'm gonna create a public property called subject and then a public property called department. On its own this is not enough to simply load in the TSV file and have ml.net understand how to reference it. We need to use some attributes for this. So here above the subject I'm going to tell it to load column. So this is part of the Microsoft.ml.data namespace. Uh, and because I'm not using that at the moment, it's giving me a red squiggly. So I'll just add that in. So ML.data. And then I can pass in the index of the column in the TSV file. So this is just me mapping the subject property here to the subject column in my TSV file. I'll do the same thing for department, which will be one. Now we need some global variables. So we need to be able to globally reference the location of our TSV file. So I'm gonna create a training file path. So this can just be a string. Uh, I'm gonna call it training file path. And then I'm gonna copy the location of this file. So just pop that in there and there we go. As part of this as well, I'm gonna be creating a new model from the training set. So I need to specify a location to which I want that to be saved. I want this to be saved in the same folder as the TSV file that I already have. And it's gonna get saved into a zip file when it's created. So I'm gonna copy again this path, but at the end, I'm gonna create a file called model.zip. So it's gonna be a string and model file path is the name of the variable. Copy the path again, but at the very end, I'm gonna say that it will be called model.zip. We also need a global variable for our ML context. Now an ML context is very similar 
to what you would use in Entity Framework for a DB context. It's a context for the machine learning operations you want to perform. So whenever you're performing machine learning in ML.NET, you're interacting with an ML context. And so we only need one of those and we want it to be globally accessible. So I'm going to create a variable of type ML context and I'm going to call it, you guessed it, ML context. That can just stay there for now. So now I've got a path for my training set. I've got a path for my future model that I'll be creating. And I've got a reference to an ML context. Now I'm going to initialize that ML context now. So I'm going to say ML context equals new ML context, but I can also pass in a seed, which is a sort of classic machine learning terminology. It's not anything I'm going to go too deep into. It can get quite complex, but we're seeding that context with some random data. In order to create a random seed, we can say for the seed, I'm passing in zero. So now we're ready to actually load the data into memory so that we can manipulate it. We can pre-process it and turn it into a model through training uh, and then obviously then do a prediction. Now there's a specific type in ML.NET that allows us to visualize and manipulate the data from the TSV file. So it's a type of iDataView. So I'm gonna create that here. So iDataView, and I'm gonna call it uh, test or training data view. And I can initialize that now using ML context, which has a function called load from text file. So I'm going to be setting training data view equals, and I'm referencing my ML context dot data dot load from text file. And then I put in a type, which will be email subject. So it's loading it in and it's going to project that into a type or a class, which is as we created email subject. So then it expects us to supply the path, which is easy. We can pass in the training file path that we created at the top, and then it allows us to specify some options. Now, one of the options that I like to use is has header. It's by default false. I'm gonna set it to true so that we can say this has column headers inside it. So, so far we've done most of the easy work. We've established our ML context. We've said where the paths are for various different helper files, and we've loaded the data into uh, a iData view so that it can be pre-processed. So now it's time to do that pre-processing. What the pre-processing is, is a means of creating what we call a pipeline that can later be used to predict against when we've got incoming data. So that will involve extracting the data from the data view that we've created and then transforming it in such a way that it can be used as part of this machine learning process. So in order to do that, there's several things we need to do, but I'm going to put them into one method called process data. Now, as I said, we're going to be returning a pipeline and this pipeline has a specific type. It's of type I estimator of I transformer doesn't sound very straightforward, but trust me, the documentation is really good at explaining this stuff. We know that's the type we want to return so that we can use that as our pipeline. So I estimator of type I transformer is what we're going to create. And the function we're creating is process data. So we're simply going to create our pipeline to be returned. And this involves us appending lots of different values together. So the first thing we want to add to the pipeline is a map to the actual value we want to output. So in terms of our email subject class, the thing we want to output is the department, but the machine learning pipeline will know this as a label. So we need to map department to label. So first of all, I'm going to create a variable for my pipeline. And then I'm going to say again on our ML context. So it's in transforms.conversion. So we're going to be converting using map key to value using map value to key. So we're going to be mapping the department value to a key called label because we're labeling these email subjects with a department. So the input column is called department as per our TSV file and the output column name will be label. So we don't close that off yet because we've got a few things to append to this pipeline. Stick with me. This can get a little bit complex, but trust me, it's going to be fine. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to append some featureization. So this is where a little bit of knowledge of machine learning helps, but it's not too complex. It's stuff you can stay high level on. But featureization is essentially 
a means of transforming text into numerical vectors. So we're simply representing this text, the values of the text in the TSV file as a number, which means that it's easier for a machine learning pipeline to look at the differences between those values because it's just looking at numerical values or vectors. If you want to get really deep into this, you can look in, into vector databases. It's a big part of data science and a big part of artificial intelligence in general. But because we're using ML.NET, for the most part, we just want to stay high level. So for the purposes of this example, it's just featureization being converting our text into a numerical value. So we append this functionality to our pipeline. And to do the featureization for the columns, we again go into transforms. And this time we go into text and we call featureize text. And similar to the last, we have input column name. So we want to featureize subject. And that will be outputted into column of our choosing. We can call it email subject featureized. And there's one more thing to append to this pipeline, which will be to concatenate those featureized values into the features category for the overall pipeline. That probably doesn't make much sense, but it might make more sense once I've written it. It's probably something that would make more sense if you had more columns, but really I'm only using one column in the featureization, the subject. But think of it as I'm creating a features object that comprises all of the featureized columns that I've just featureized. Good English, even though I've only got one. So again, ML context dot transforms dot concatenate. So this is concatenating one or more input columns into a new output column. We only have one, but that's fine. We can still do it. So it's going into features and the columns are all the featureized columns, which I only have one. So email subject featureized. Now we could close that off, but one thing that Microsoft does advise is that we append a cache checkpoint passing in our ML context. Apparently that's supposed to help performance. Honestly, I don't understand how that is, whether it really applies to my use case, but the documentation does advise it, except if you're using very high volume data sets or large data sets. That's where it could actually negatively impact performance. So for a small data set like ours, it, it makes sense to just put it on. There's a caching system that somehow improves the performance. So that was a big one. Now that we've done that, we can then just return our pipeline. So now going back up into our what would be our main method, we can actually call this now and say, I'm going to create my pipeline, which is the result of process data. Okay, so at this point now, we've got our pre-processing done. We're ready to actually train the model and build it so that we have that models.zip file in our directory. Again, stick with me. It might become more clear as you see me write the code, but this next function is very similar to what we've just done with the append that we've just done for the pipeline. We're going to create a function called build and train model, which will take care of everything that we want to do for the training. So again, this also returns an I estimator of type I transformer, and we're calling it build and train model. Now this time we're going to pass in a few things that we've already initialized. So we're going to pass in our data view. So that's the visualization of the data that we've pulled in from the TSV file. And we're going to pass in our pipeline. And those two things are going to be used to build and train the model. So I data view, training data view, and I estimator of type I transformer pipeline. So those are two things we've already created in that first part. So again, another pipeline we're going to create called training pipeline. And this is where we're going to append into that first pipeline we created. So this is where we specify what kind of classifier we're going to use. So there are two types of classification that we can do. We can do what's called binary classification, where we say that something is either this or it isn't, or it's one thing, we classify it as that, and it can only be that. If I say that a giraffe is an animal, it can only be an animal, it can't be a mammal as well. The opposite of that would be what we call multi-class classification. Multi-class classification is hard to say, but it also means that you think one thing could be one of several things. So we could say that the department could be IT, but it could also be finance, for example. 
we want to make sure that we use multi-class classification for this use case. So we do this by saying mlcontext.multiclass classification. We can access the trainers and we're going to use, this is the algorithm that we're going to use, which is SDCA maximum entropy. SDCA maximum entropy. If we look at the IntelliSense for this, it's expecting a label column. So we're going to pass in the one that we actually created before and also the features column, which is what we concatenated after featurizing that data. So we'll say the names of them. So the first column is label and the second column is features. Label, features. Now I've closed that off, but actually I want to append something to it again. And what I want to append is uh, the inverse of this map value to key. I actually want to do map key to value. We're going to call that key predicted label. So that basically allows us to map the result into column called predicted label. You'll see why that makes sense later on. So ML context dot transforms dot conversion dot map key to value predicted label. So it feels like we've created about a billion pipelines, but this is the pipeline that we're now going to use to actually train. So to train in ML.NET, we can use the fit method. The fit method is part of the training pipeline that we've just created, and that expects us to pass in the data which is represented using that data view, the I data view. And this will return the trained model. So we're going to want to keep this in a global context just so that we can reference it elsewhere if we need to. So the trained model is of type I transformer. So I'm going to create an I transformer and call it model. That then means that I can initialize that here and say that's equal to the value of training pipeline dot fit on that data training data view and then I can return that pipe the training pipeline so I've still got so we've got our model now we've trained the model but it's only in memory I want to keep that model persisted somewhere so once it's been trained it's actually been written to the disk so that I can reference it elsewhere if I need to so for that I'm going to create a method called save model as file so I'll do that here I'll say void save method as file and ML context has a functionality for this already, so I can say ML context dot model dot save. So then it will ask me for this specific model, which we've just initialized globally underscore model. It wants the input schema. Now this is basically related to the data view that we've used, the, the view of the TSV file. So training data view dot schema. So that's the layout of that view. And then stream would be the place that we want to actually persist it. So I'm just going to reference the path that we're saving to. So calling that should allow us to then take that train model and persist it on disk. Now there's one more class that we need to create. Uh, we've already created a class to represent each row of the training set. We haven't created one to represent the output. So I'm going to create a class underneath the email subject class. I'm going to call it department prediction. So this will be the predicted department. So it's going to have just one property. I'm going to make it nullable and it's going to be called department. And hopefully you've remembered that I created a column called predicted label and I said that it would make sense later on. Well, this is it. This is where we use an annotation or an, an attribute to specify that this is column name predicted label. So we told it that the output should be mapped to the key predicted label, which will then map it into the department property of our department prediction class. Because we've now got the email subject class for the input and the department prediction class for the output, we can create what's called a prediction engine. That will allow us to actually do the prediction based on our trained model. So I'm going to put this up here. and I'm going to say this is prediction engine of type and you can see we've got a t source and a t destination so hopefully this is starting to make sense around why we featureized things why we did the pre-processing it was all gearing up to this we were saying here's the source data all packaged up and processed and here's the destination which will be our prediction so email subject is our source and department prediction is our destination and then i'm just going to call this prediction engine.
So here's the good part then. We've done all the prep, we've got all the data pre-processed, we've created our ML context, our training sets, our prediction engine. Now it's time to actually write the code which will do the prediction and return the result. I wanna return the result as a string, simply the department string. So I'm gonna create a function which returns a string and I'm gonna call it predict department for subject line and that will take in a subject line parameter. So now the first thing we do is we load the model that we'd trained and saved to disk. So I can say var model equals mlcontext.model.load. We reference the model path and this requires us to specify an out parameter. So I'll create a new variable called model input schema. We then create a new instance of our email subject class, again, to represent the incoming email subject. So I'll create var email subject equals new email subject. Uh, we don't have a constructor on it for it. So I'm just going to say uh, subject equals subject line. We don't need to specify the department because obviously we don't know the department. We're just going to say the subject is the incoming subject line. Then we can initialize our prediction engine. So we can set prediction engine equals ML context again, most things come from the ML context dot model dot create prediction engine of type email subject department prediction. And then that requires us to pass in our model. Then we can get the result. So we'll say var result equals prediction engine dot predict passing in email subject the class. And of course that creates a department prediction type object. So we can return result.department. So we created the prediction code. Two things I've missed. Uh, after process data, I showed you how to create the methods for building and training the model and then saving the model to disk, but I never called them. So let's do that. So var training pipeline equals build and train model, passing the training data view and that pipeline from process data. Then I'll save save model. It looks like I've created it as save method as file. Okay, my bad. Save model as file. And then let's just give this a quick test. So var result equals predict department for subject line. And I'm gonna say the subject line is new invoice and then I'll put a console.read line there so it keeps going and then I'll breakpoint it here and we'll step through it. So we're creating our ML context, loading the training data, creating the pipeline, creating the training pipeline. So we've trained the data, that's why it took a little bit longer. Save it as a file. If I look in Solution Explorer, we can see I have model.zip now where I didn't have it before and then I'll do my prediction look at the result and it's saying finance, which is what I would expect. So let's make this a little bit more interactive. Let's make it so that we can type in an email subject and get the result. So I'm gonna create a variable called keep running, set it to true. Then I'm gonna output some stuff to the console so that the user can understand what's happening. Enter subject lines to predict. And then we wanna be able to exit it. So I'm gonna say type quit to close the app. So then we're going to use a while loop to keep this going. So I want the application to keep running and so that you can keep typing in email subjects and have them predicted until you quit. So while keep running, I'm going to say we've got to, we're going to capture the subject line. So that will be equal to console.readline. If the person's typed in the word quit in uppercase, then we'll say keep running equals false. I need to make that equality. There we go else we're going to write out the prediction so console.writeline will output the result of predict department for subject line and then what passing in whatever they typed in so let's take a look at that and see what we get i'm going to get rid of that breakpoint okay so we've got enter subject lines to predict type quit to close the app so printer not working Let's come back as IT. I'll just zoom that in. Um, new employee contract to be signed. HR. So, so far, it's looking pretty good. 
customer uh, report. See what that gives us. Sales. Okay, good. Uh, market research results. Sales. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Now, I'm sure we could break this somehow. Let's see. Printer for new employee. HR. So, I mean, at the moment, because we've got such a small data set, there's still room for crossover. And the model is obviously quite opinionated towards HR for that one. So that's an example of something that would need further training to make the accuracy better. So you could take this to the next level and say, okay, I'm going to build in something which could ingest new subject lines and add those subject lines to the model, to the TSV file. Then I retrain it and do the process again. There's lots of different things you can do to take this forward, but I think this has created the basis for any classification project that you would build using ml.net. That was pretty full on. The documentation is really good. I would definitely encourage you to research more on learn.microsoft.com. If you do have any questions, then leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more great content like this. And until next time, stay safe in that artificial intelligence saturated world.